welcome to our webinar. Uh, today we are talking about press releases and PR, and uh, you know all of which is very important in the aviation industry because we don't always control everything. Uh, so you know, good press, bad press, all of it happens, and all of it uh, can be managed to a greater or lesser extent. And the better job you do managing it, the better you will do at sales and and general company success, right? Yep. That'll okay. Make you or break you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the good and the bad of uh, of press. So um, let's jump right in. Um, a lot of this, a lot of people ask us, you know, that's one of the things that we talk about in one of our very first meetings with a new client is how can we get more publicity? How can we get mentioned in the aviation uh, magazines? How can we get mentioned in our local publications, other kinds of things like that? Because people know that uh, that's more credible than advertising. Um, you know, there's been a lot of whining about fake news lately, but still the news media <laughs> is more credible than advertising and you know being able to get mentioned in the press being able to get interviewed when something happens in aviation getting known as an expert you know all of those things are really valuable and you know if you take two different companies one of whom has a CEO uh, or a public figure of some sort that's really well known in the local media and the aviation media and the other one that keeps a really low profile who do you think is going to get more business, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, people who are really well known, you know, that celebrity really helps you get over uh, a lot of different things, a lot of sales objections. It helps your, your sales. It helps your um, customer service because people want to be associated with, with companies that are known uh, as experts in their field. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So you're in the right place if you are in the aviation industry or something closely related. Uh, and if you don't have a, a big PR firm on retainer, <laughs> if you do have a big PR firm on the re on retainer, then that's their problem, not yours, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. If those, both of those things are true, then you are in the right place. So I'm Paula Williams. And I am the guy there. I'm John Williams. <laughs> and we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you ladies and gentlemen out there sell more products and services in the aviation world. Right. Okay. So a lot of the things that we're going to be sharing today we got from a number of different sources. Uh, we do try to uh, annotate where possible uh, in the notes and, and also in uh, other places. Um, a lot of the information that we use here is stuff that we have used for ourselves with our clients and a lot of our clients who may or may not be on the line today we're going to try and attribute everything as appropriate but uh, we have a long life behind us <laughs> in publicity and aviation so um, we'll, we'll try and make sure that we attribute everything appropriately so please be sure to turn off your cell phone uh, close all your other screens uh, you know <laughs> multitasking is highly overrated, but you are going to want uh, a pen or a pencil. You're going to want the two handouts for this session, and you're going to want to take some notes uh, because we really want to make this valuable for you and make sure that you walk out of this with a customized plan of you know what's going to work for you and what isn't. All right, now, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, I agree. They need the handout. This says there are five. You said two. There are two. Why don't you just say two or five? I don't know. Now, whatever. Okay. And make sure you download them so you can use them. <laughs> exactly. The two are the press releases tip sheet and also uh, the copy of these slides that you can download and, and uh, scribble on as we go through this. Um, speaking of scribbling, this is a lot of text. Um, there's a lot of things um, that have been discussed about publicity, but we're going to simplify that all for you. Um, you can read all of that at your leisure. I'm not going to read it to you. but at its simplest level, it is basically visibility that you didn't pay for. So you didn't actually pay rent on a billboard. You didn't uh, buy an ad in a magazine. Uh, but pretty much anything else is publicity that uh, that you didn't pay for, right? Absolutely. Okay, cool. All right, so how do you get publicity? There are four ways, right? Um, the first one is to write good press releases. Okay, if you write bad press releases, you're not going to get any publicity, you're just wasting your time. And we're going to talk about the difference between good and bad and all that stuff, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, develop relationships with reporters, and we're going to talk about how to find the right reporters for you, uh, and also how to build those relationships and make them look forward to your calls and information and emails and everything else instead of <clears throat> running into the other room and having their assistant handle it for you. They have lucky enough to have an assistant these days. Mm -hmm. um, three, you also want to build your own audience that you can talk to directly, and we're going to talk about that as well, so you don't always have to go through those media outlets. And the fourth way to get publicity is to do something bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Crash an airplane, um, have you know something happen with somebody's money, you know, there's any number of things that can go wrong. And in aviation we're all in the business of risk management, right? Yep, and just so you know that picture, that airplane didn't fly into the building. <laughs> they were doing a test run and the brakes failed and before they get it stopped it ran into the building and that's what happened. Exactly. So, you know, there's always strange things that can happen and, you know, we are dealing with uh, expensive equipment. We're dealing with a high-risk um, industry, really, uh, by definition. So uh, we do want to be prepared for those things. We're going to talk about that today, too. Okay. So how do you leverage good publicity? We'll, we'll start with the positive side, right? Absolutely. Okay. We recommend that everybody create uh, a what we call a race car graphic. Um, we call this the race car graphic. We do this for each of our clients um, who have um, a content relationship with us. Uh, and the reason for this is because we want to start collecting the logos of places that have featured your product or service and you know, have maybe run uh, a news release from you or interviewed you or uh, featured you in some way. Um, so, you know, ABCI has been seen in General Aviation News, AIN, NBAA, Flying Magazine, AMT, you know, all kinds of different places. What does that do when somebody visits our site versus visiting the, a site of a competitor? And so, what effect does that have on you if you visit two different competitor sites, um, and I'm talking to John here, <laughs> if you're visiting two different sites, uh, of two different uh, companies that offer the same product or service, and one of them has this and one of them doesn't. You say, hmm, these guys seem to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, this doesn't tell you whether um, any of those things are positive, negative, or anything else. Most of those were positive in our case, <laughs> so we like to, uh, to take credit for them. So the first thing that comes to mind, the easiest way to get mentioned in the press, uh, and the traditional way, is uh, a press release distribution service. So basically, you write a press release, you pay a hundred bucks, you push a button, and magic happens, right? Well, purportedly magic happens. Right, exactly. The magic that happens is your hundred dollars goes away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what will absolutely happen in these cases is that your hundred dollars will go away. What may or may not happen, depending on the quality of your press release, the newsworthiness of the item that you've written about, um, the quality of your headline, most particularly, the quality of any images you send along with that, um, the busyness of the news day, and any number of other factors uh, is going to impact what happens from that point. But you do lose control of it, right? Yep, unless okay. uh, you use somebody like we do. <laughs> right. Well, we still lose control of it. In the right, sense but, but by the time we lose control of it, everybody through the system all the way up to the guy that presses the button has reviewed and said, no, you don't want to do that, you want to do this, and all the way down, and we have a lot higher percentage chance of getting the thing out where it needs to go. Exactly. So a lot of folks have tried one or more of these services with less than satisfactory Stellar results. results. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, there's lots of, of very good reasons for that. Um, but then a lot of people get turned off of press releases and they think, oh, that doesn't work. You know, we're not going to ever do that again. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. Well, so, the thing is, they're wasting $100 at a shot, whereas we pay multiple hundreds of dollars to get a quality firm. Right, exactly. So, um, and they right. actually help us write it. Yeah. So, you know, using these services actually can be a good thing, but only under certain circumstances. So we'll get into more of that uh, later, but what most people experience when they use these <laughs> services is what we call the black hole, right? No, oh, that's the galaxy spinning. That's not a black hole. Oh, that's true. Bad, 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 bad use of graphics. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll get rid of that one. 
you get the idea of the black hole, though. Um, so questions about press releases, you can type them into the, um, the questions box, and uh, John will be facilitating those for us, which is nice. Yep. So, so here's one. So they his, heard what we said, but said, so are they really worth doing? Are they really worth doing? Yes and no. Um, they are not worth doing in and of themselves, and they are not the only thing that you have to do in order to uh, get picked up by, by the media. Um, there's, there's more to the, the story than that, but yes, they are worth doing under, under certain circumstances, and we'll, uh, we'll get into that. So we'll come back to that question at the end and let me know if, you answer, if we answered it adequately, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I heard you about the $100 per release. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Absolutely. Um, it is worth investing in good publicity, and 100 bucks is not a terrible investment, but you want to back up that investment with really, really good, newsworthy press releases, good writing, uh, and so on. So uh, yes and no. <laughs> and I know I didn't answer either of those questions very definitively, but uh, um, we'll come back to them at the end and make sure that we, we answered them. Of those services, are any yeah. of them particularly good or bad? Of those services, um, it depends on the nature of the. Um, and I'm going to go back to that slide just so that we have. Uh, it, it depends on the nature of the news that you're sharing. So if it has to do with finance, then uh, Business Wire or Market Wire are really, really good. Um, if it has to do with aviation, um, there are very few of these that that do much good at all. Um, you know, our favorite, uh, you know, we've got a couple of favorites for different things, you know, depending on which, uh, which topic you have and also which area you're in. So some of them are better in some parts of the country. Um, all of these are related to the U.S. So if you're outside of the U.S., then all bets are off. You can specify country and some of these like PR web um, does international um, publicity, but uh, it's not as reliable in some parts of the world as others, right? And, we, and we've used most all of these at one time or another throughout our professional life. Absolutely. So, yeah, carrying on. Um, well, I think that's all so far. Okay, that's it so far. All right, let's carry on. All right, so um, what you really need to do in addition to submitting a press release or preparing um, a press release is to market to reporters. Uh, marketing is what we do. We are a marketing firm. Um, and if you are in an aviation industry, you are probably familiar with, with the concept of marketing. Um, in other words, you're selling an idea to a reporter. Um, what reporters want is they want eyeballs on their story. So if you have, number one, a very newsworthy story, Number two, a big audience already. You know, you've got a good Twitter following, a good Facebook following, a good number of people following your blog, a good reputation in the industry. All of those things work in your favor. Um, so, you know, whenever we do a press release that mentions one of the big companies like Boeing or so on, uh, we have a better rate of pickup than if we don't, right? Um, magically, <laughs> that happens. So, you know, what do reporters want? They want to keep their advertisers happy. They want to keep their readers interested. They want to keep their own numbers of engagement up. They want to get raises. They want to get Pulitzers. You know, that's what they want. So, you know, if you can help them get what they want, they'll give you what you want, which is good publicity, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So um, one of the ways that we can do this so let's talk about how do we find the reporters that are going to be interested in our story. The first thing we do is we set up a Google alert for our topic. So let's say we're in airplane sales, we're a broker, okay? Um, we're not a broker, but if we were a broker, we would do this, right? Okay. Um, we would set up a Google alert, and you do this by going to google.com forward slash alerts, very simple. And uh, you type in your topic or your keyword, the thing that you want to be uh, known for. And then um, you can specify, you know, whether you want um, these alerts to be sent to you once a day. If that gets to be too much, you can do this once a week, do it every Friday, you know, whatever you need to do to incorporate this into your, your own personal workflow. I always ask for only the best results because I don't want to be spammed to death, right? Yep. Okay. And then what it will send you is news stories on that topic. 
And then you can click into those news stories and see who wrote them, what publication, what reporter, you know, all of those things. And then you start making a list of the reporters in your industry or the reporters for your particular topic. So now you know um, CAPA, Center for Aviation, um, wrote an article about this. Um, you can probably find the name of the reporter. Um, so start making a list of publications, start making a list of reporters, right? This is hard work. Nobody said this was easy. <laughs> if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And then we'd have the same problem. You know, people would be, the volume of press releases would be um, shockingly large. But I can guarantee you, almost guarantee you, that your competitors are not going to go to this level of effort. Um, so if you can do this, you will <clears throat> stand a much better chance of getting uh, mentioned. The other thing that you want to do is watch the industry publications. You know what your customers watch or listen to. Um, grab those and you know look for stories on your topic and uh, you know keep a list of the publications and the reporters. Uh, and then you know now that you know the names of the reporters, what do you do? Um, well, first of all, I apologize. This is trying to figure out which which publications you want to. Um, subscribe to or listen to. Each of these publications has a link somewhere on their website that says advertising or uh, you know marketing through us or something like that. And if you click on that link, it's going to ask you if you want a media kit. Um, one of the things in their media kit is going to be subscriber demographics, and it's going to be a chart like this or a table or something like that. Um, so if you can tell that you know this has a high percentage of the kind of people that make the decisions to buy your product or service, chances are this is a good publication for you. You know if it is not a good percentage, or you know maybe a lot of these people are not really relevant to you, uh, then you might want to keep looking. But you want to look for the best possible demographics for the people who make decisions about your product or service because you want to be influencing the right people. It doesn't men matter if you get on the Oprah Winfrey show if you're selling in aviation. You know, our people aren't there. Right. <laughs> they don't have time during the day to tune into the Oprah Winfrey show, and I'm sure we're going to get hate mail about that. Somebody loves the Oprah Winfrey show. but um, Well, it's not a bad show, but it just doesn't help in what you do. Exactly. It's the wrong wrong folks, okay? So you want to make sure that you're targeting the right people and uh, using the right publications for that. So right topics, right demographics, right reporters. Um, once you find the publications, you can connect with those publications and the easiest way to do this is to use LinkedIn. Um, this is a free tool, almost everybody has it and uses it anyway, but almost nobody uses it in this particular way. Um, so, you know, let's say Cygnus Business Media, you know, they have one or two of the magazines that you're interested in, in publishing in. Um, then you can see how you're connected. When you go to this company, um, it will show you, here are the profiles of the people that you're connected to. And this is the number you want to grow. You want to, you know, I've got two uh, first degree connections at Cygnus Business Media. Um, you should have a network at the publications that are important to you. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, let's say you find a reporter that, is, that you are really interested in and that uh, writes about stuff that you want to do all the time. Um, you can connect with them directly on LinkedIn, um, you know, ideally through someone that you know or by uh, sending them a message if you're using the, the LinkedIn uh, premium service, you can send them a message directly. If not, you can ask for an introduction uh, through someone that you know. Um, if you don't know anyone, you know, then you're kind of starting from scratch and it might be better to approach them some other way, either um, on Twitter or, or something like that. Um, I find this much easier to do before you have a story to pitch, right? <laughs> so you, you dig your well before you're thirsty, you know, I'm sure you've heard that, uh, that saying before. So you want to be building your network of reporters before you have a um, a plane crash or something that you you need to talk to a reporter about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah, connect with reporters and if they ask you for help with something, help them, right? Uh, they are really good friends to have and um, you know a lot of them are really good people so you know there's nothing wrong with that. Um, this is just a kind of a funny list of things never to say to a reporter um, I have never seen anything, you've never seen anything like this before, you know, they hear that every day. Um, when can we expect to see this go up? 
you know, you submit a, a press release and say, when can we expect to see this go up? First of all, you're not expecting them to do anything. They don't work for you, right? Mm. They are not your employees. Um, I know this isn't your area, but, you know, you well, want them to Why are you talking it. to them? Yeah, exactly. You do the homework and send it to the right reporter. That's, that's your job, not theirs. Can you send me 10 copies of this article as soon as it's printed? You know what? They're not your secretary. <laughs> It's your job to go out and buy 10 copies of the magazine, or they usually have a reprint room where you can uh, uh, you know, get those kinds of things through the magazine, but that's not part of the reporter's job. Um, can you let me know as soon as this article is printed? The reporter probably doesn't know, right? He's submitting stories the same as the rest of us. His editor is making the decision about when it goes in. They don't have time to keep track of those things, and right? It may not be current article may go into next month's next week's article magazine. Right, exactly. If I give you a good tip and you write the story, can you promise me you'll give it good play? I can't believe somebody actually said that to a reporter, but these are actual remarks that uh, that reporters have told us about. Can you please not use my name? Oh, good grief. Yeah, this is not um, Watergate, you know, in most <laughs> cases. <laughs> this doesn't rise to the level of, um, you know, that kind of game playing. So, you know, they're not interested in that sort of thing. They're only interested in, in people who are willing to give them real facts that are really verifiable and, and so on, and that you're willing to stand behind. Okay, so questions about reporters and publications. Now we know how to find them, um, things we can do and things we shouldn't do uh, to make and keep them happy, right? Yeah, this is an interesting. Do you have a Rolodex of reporters that you share? No. <laughs> yes to the first part, no to the second part. Um, you know, this is like asking somebody to share their checkbook. Um, you know, I don't mean to be offensive to the person that asked the question because they probably don't know. Um, but, you know, once again, if we shared our list of reporters, um, there would not be very many reporters who would be willing to talk to us on a regular basis. No. Um, we are very careful to only send them news that they think is, or that we think they are going to find useful for them. Um, you know, we don't spam them, we don't share their information with anyone else, um, and so on. So yes, we have a Rolodex. It's one of our most prized possessions. It's in a secret. <laughs> unspecified location in our office that we're not going to tell you. Um, but we do use that on behalf of our clients and, uh, you know, we do cultivate that uh, very carefully. And sometimes these uh, ladies and gentlemen end up being friends, actually. That's true. Yeah, so we don't sell them out. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what about uh, press rooms or press briefings at trade shows? Ah, good question. And we actually do talk about that in our webinar um, on uh, trade shows because I do think that's very, very much underutilized. Most press show, sorry, most trade shows, um, when you, especially when you rent a booth, they have a whole package of benefits that you get that very few people use, including they have uh, press events. You know, often you will get a, an opportunity to present news. Uh, the big companies usually take advantage of this to announce big sales and um, deals and things like that. The smaller companies tend not to do this because they just don't know what to write about or what to do. Uh, but that's a very underutilized opportunity, and I think you should uh, plan your news, plan something newsworthy around a big trade show that you're going to, especially if you're um, renting a booth, right? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about that um, off the. The, the record, we don't have a lot of time for it today, but that's also in our um, our thing, right? So, I think for now, that's all. Okay, very good. All right, so an editorial calendar, this is a example of one. Um, you can get this once again by going to any publication and going to the advertising link usually um, and requesting a media kit. Often they'll send you something in the mail. Um, sometimes it's electronic, but usually they will tell you what topics they're planning on covering and when. Uh, and what that does is it gives you some um, some interesting insights into how to plan your own news um, for your company. So, you know, if you are a company that sells some type of safety equipment, uh, then you know you need to be talking to this publication long before March and April. Mm -hmm. um, you know, find out who the reporter is that usually writes about safety. Um, you know, get to know them, 
ask them if they need any charts, graphs, pictures, photographs, interviews, quotes, anything that will help them with that uh, with that episode or that issue, right? Yep, and if uh, they will be more than happy to tell you if they do need something. Yes, exactly. And when they ask you for something, you want to provide. actually provide it and provide something good, uh, you know, that they can use without a lot of work. Um, and then once you've done that, you've established a, a good relationship. And just like any other relationship, the more you feed and water and, and care for that relationship, the better it works, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. So that's uh, editorial calendars and how to use them. The other thing is you want to read the writer's guidelines. Almost all of these publications have um, guidelines. This, I think, is from Flying Magazine. Um, don't give us the obvious, right? Mm -hmm. um, or merely touch on the surface of a subject. Our readers are not beginners and don't have time to waste reading what they already know. Um, you know. Anyway, they give you an idea of who their readers are, what sorts of things they're looking for, and what makes it more likely for you to get published in their publication. So um, they actually write those for a reason, not just because they feel like it, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so you do want to make sure that you tell great stories. And there's a lot of um, information on how to tell a great story, some uh, resources we've used in our uh, mastermind groups and book clubs and things like that, or Joey Asher's uh, Even a Geek Can Speak, you know, talking about how to make very technical information more interesting. Um, you may have heard, you know, Elon Musk sold the Powerwall idea using fourth grade language. Um, so, you know, he's not a stupid person, <laughs> but he can uh, really simplify the way he tells things and, you know, use good examples and uh, you know, make things very interesting uh, and simple, you know, especially very technical things. That's usually our challenge in the aviation industry is making things simple enough to be interesting to anyone who's, you know, maybe even a little bit outside of our, our field, right? Yep. All right. So, um, yeah, even a geek can speak, that's a good one. Another one is uh, um, the one on content. Do -do -do -do. The content code by um, Mark Schaefer. <laughs> Mark Schaefer. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one on uh, you know being able to construct a, a really good story and using a, a good structure for that. All right. Um, headlines. A lot of people will spend zero time on the headline. They think the story is the important thing. As it turns out, uh, especially if you're using digital media, which most of us are, and most of the press releases that we work with end up being published online, um, I would say 75% get published online and 25% and or less actually get into print these days. So it's really, really important. The first thing they see is a headline and maybe an image. Um, so you really want to spend a lot of time um, writing a good headline. These are some typical press release headlines. And you know your reaction, of course, is, who cares? <laughs> you know, what's in it for me? You know, why would I care that a company introduced a product? Um, why do I care that a company has an anniversary and throws a party? You know, why do I care that a company hired a person? Uh, you want to make sure that this is something that is useful to the person that's reading uh, the the magazine or the publication. So you really want to work on. And these might be perfectly great stories, but with a headline like that. You know, it's never going to get clicked on and it's never going to get read. So you really want to think about what is interesting about this company. Um, I used to work for Wells Fargo and we used to spend a whole day, once a year, uh, pretty much talking about the lore, uh, the history, the stories, um, you know, the shotgun uh, writer, the, you know, Jack the dog, the stagecoach, um, the history of, of Wells Fargo, which is kind of crazy. But, um, you know, every company has great stories, and most people don't spend enough time um, managing those resources and managing those stories. Um, I'm going to interrupt you because here's, okay. here's a question. They want to be able to listen to this later. They said they're loaded right now. Okay. How do they do that? Um, 
uh, yeah, we'll have a, a recording available uh, of this webinar, so that's that's perfectly fine. Um, we do take questions at about six different points during the webinar, so we'll uh, keep going and get to that momentarily. So Southwest Airlines put out a children's book, you know, Gum Wrappers and Goggles, uh, basically a very simplified story of their origin. Uh, you know, we call it the origin story, and we do this with almost all of our clients. Uh, talking about how their company was formed or what problem they were invented to solve, you know, those kinds of things. There's a great story behind just about every company, especially in aviation. All right, um, case studies. Uh, this is a really good one. Eaton, Eaton's Aerospace Group wins, supports, and wins again. Um, this is set up really nicely, I think. You know, they have a little sidebar that says, uh, you know, here's the problem, the location, the segment, the problem, and the solution. And they got a nice little summary, and then you know, of course, it goes into more detail uh, in the case study. And these are really, really good, very credible information uh, that make good, uh, good stuff that you can use for um, uh, publications. They really like these. Here's one that we did for um, a client, Special Services Corporation. Now, most companies in the aviation industry are family businesses. And so, you know, this is basically about um, one of their, someone who had been a pilot with them for a number of years. Uh, their son just became a pilot and joined the, the organization. And, you know, so they posted some baby pictures and other things and really embarrassing things about the kid. <laughs> so, but, you know, this is a lot more interesting than just saying, uh, you know, new pilot joins the ranks of, of Special Services Corporation. Uh, it tells the story, you know, that his father worked at the, the organization, he grew up um, being interested in being a pilot, you know, some of the cool things that he did as a kid, uh, you know, things like that. It just makes it a thousand times more interesting. Um, another way to highlight a team member or a, an employee is when they have an unusual story. Like, this is um, a story about uh, Fred Matfield, who uh, is one of the mentors at Airline Pilot Gateway. Now this is interesting, especially for somebody who is coming from another field into being an airline pilot, because Fred was a police officer, uh, retired from being a police officer, and then became an airline pilot. And that is so much more interesting. You know, there's always a story behind the story, right? Cool. Um, so you know, having a nose for news is something that you can cultivate, right? <coughs> Um, and another thing, you know, besides a really great headline is if you can create a nice graphic and, you know, this isn't even Fred, this is a cartoon, but um, <laughs> it sort of looks like Fred. Um, but, you know, those are the first things that people see. And if you can attract somebody's interest with these things, it makes it a thousand times more interesting than just maybe a, um, a profile of, of each person that works for the company, right? Those are usually really yawningly boring because it's just <laughs> name, rank, and serial number, right? Yep, that's okay. what they do. Yeah, they do. All right. A lot of people come from the military, so they have that uh, I will not tell you anything <laughs> mentality, but that's not what we need to do uh, in this industry. So here are a couple of templates for newsworthy headlines. Um, company introduces so solution to problem for a group of people instead of, um, you know, we launch a new product. Uh, this is why you care, right? It solves this problem for these people. So, um, you know, we have a, a client that developed a piece of software or a um, feature in their piece of software that allows CFIs to track their students' uh, progress. So basically it's like um, software solves or um, responds to dreadful um, dropout rate in flight schools, you know. So that's something that creates a a need, you know, tells you why it's important or who the who it solves a problem for. So how to, um, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> how to write headlines that actually get results, you know, something that people actually want to know. So people that are attending this webinar um, probably want to write better headlines, you know, that are more likely to get clicked on. So, you know, that's something that makes it more interesting if you know who the audience is and what you're going to do for them. Um, why some pilots always land the best paying jobs. Um, it makes people curious about how they do that and what they do and, and uh, then the whole story becomes a lot more interesting. The secret of anything, everybody loves secrets. 
So you fill in the blanks with whatever it is that you do, right? Okay, so that's how to make the headlines more interesting. And you, if you still don't know what to write about, hopefully you're taking a lot of notes about your own company and about your own situation. And you're writing a whole lot of article ideas and press release ideas. Because you're going to want to be communicating with those reporters at least once a month, just so they don't forget about you. And they remember, oh, yes, this is, uh, you know, Fred at Airline Pilot Gateway. You know, I talk to him every month, and he always has something interesting for me. Um, I really look forward to his emails. So, you know, start thinking about these ideas so you have a great notebook to draw from and you never are looking at a blank sheet of paper going, we have nothing to write about this month, right? <laughs> okay, what's your origin story? What problems have you solved for customers? Um, what is the key difference between your company and your competitors? Uh, these are always more interesting than, you know, the typical um, press releases. So questions about story ideas. Hopefully you've got lots of, of ideas you're starting to write down. Uh, <laughs> okay. I sell legal services that are kind of dry and boring. Let's see. Uh, what can I do that's interesting? Okay. If you sell legal services, I totally get that you may not want to explain how you do what you do, but talk about why you do what you do, right? Um, you know, maybe there is something that you can say about problems that you've solved for particular customers with or without names. Um, you know, with names is better, of course, but I understand if somebody wants to be confidential um, because other people are in the same situation and they don't know who to go to for help, you know. I mean, that's an interesting story to the right person. Um, other things you can talk about, uh, if it's a family business, you can talk about, um, you know, the different people involved in the, or whether or not it's a family business, you can talk about the backgrounds of the people that got into the business. Maybe you've got a fighter pilot who became an attorney. Um, you know, there's all kinds of crazy things that happen in this industry. Uh, so I'm sure there's really good stories, if not about the company itself, then certainly about the people, about your customers, about the product you um, provide. Um, about how you got into legal services, you know, maybe there's some inspiring story there. Uh, you know, lots of things that we can talk about. And of course we can, uh, if anybody wants to, we can do a 30 minute consultation and we can talk specifically about your situation because I know we don't have a lot of time here to delve into lots of nosy questions about what you do and how to make it interesting. So, um, other questions? What are some ideas? For flight schools. Some ideas for flight schools. Okay, that's actually easier. Um, you have got success stories every single day probably with somebody that overcomes an obstacle or uh, learns to fly when they're 94 or, um, you know, decides to learn to fly uh, after another career or, you know, is very young and, you know, started when they were uh, a little kid, you know, really interested in flying and so on. Um, when people solo for the first time, that's always a great story. You could do interviews of people that are willing and able. Um, there's one flight school I know that publishes on their Facebook account every time a deer, there's a particular deer that happens by the flight school and they take pictures of them on a regular basis. Uh, you know, just hear some interesting things that happen around the airport. So, you know, whatever is interesting to you is probably interesting to other people as well. So you, I'm sure you can brainstorm some some good thoughts there. Uh, that's all so far. So, so far? Okay, cool. Carrying on. When the unthinkable happens, and um, sometimes it does, right? Um, this is aviation. <laughs> Nothing is unthinkable, right? <laughs> um, you want to brainstorm, you know, what could possibly go wrong? And in most cases, you're going to have some general ideas. You know, something could go wrong with an aircraft. Uh, something could go wrong with, um, you know, the... Uh, illness of a key member of your company or the death of a key member of your company or, um, you know, an incident on the ramp. If you're um, an airport, you could think about things that could happen on the property that you want to be prepared to talk about. Um, CJ4 coming in with stuck gear, stuck uh, up. Yeah. So then you're going to have a, a landing that's going to make the airplane not reusable. Mm -hmm. and you need to think about what to tell because the reporters are going to call. Yeah, so, you know, you might do a doomsday meeting, you know, we, these are always kind of fun, you know, you have everybody in your organization for 10 minutes just brainstorm what are the things that have or could uh, go wrong that you might need to respond to with some kind of media. 
Um, and just write down all of those ideas, and then they'll probably fall into three or four different classifications. You know, either um, things that went wrong with the property, things that went wrong with people, things that went wrong with equipment, um, and so on. And then uh, what you can do is prepare for those by creating some fill-in-the-blank press releases. You know, here's what happened, here's you know some details about it, here's who to contact, um, and so on. And we can give you a pretty good format for that, right? So basically what you want to do when something bad happens is the opposite of what we've been talking about so far, right? You don't want to be focusing on creating an intriguing, fabulous headline. You want to make this as boring as possible. Um, you want to get your news out there because you want to be the one to tell the story, right? If you tell the story first, you control the story. So you want it to be concise, unambiguous, and complete but as boring as humanly possible. So you don't want to hide anything big. Um, you know, so if something happened, you want to say, um, what is it what you just said? The stuck gear situation? Let's do a headline for that. Oh, the CJ4? A CJ4 came into the airport with stuck gear at 11.47 p.m. on Thursday. Pilot is okay. Um, there is some damage to the aircraft. Yep. Okay. The airport will be reusable at a given time as yeah. soon as we clean off the runway. <laughs> airport is closed for X amount of time. So, you know, there's the, the facts. That's your summary. And you could create a headline that's just a subset of those facts. So, you know, fairly simple. Um, you're going to want to write the summary as concise as possible. So one or two paragraphs of the summary. Here's what happened. And then you can write one or two paragraphs focusing on something more positive. So you know, to prevent this sort of thing in the future, we have implemented some procedures. Um, you know, we're going to be doing some training for pilots. We're having a workshop next Wednesday on emergency procedures um, hosted by um, the CEO of the company, blah, 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 who's a former um, pilot with a 50-year safety record. Highlight something positive, right? Yep. Um, the next thing you want to do is appoint someone to be available for interviews. Now, this is very important because if the media calls and nobody answers the phone, they're going to say they were not available for comment. And everybody's going to think, oh, my God. <laughs> they're running. They're hiding. They're um, you know, not responding appropriately. They're not being responsible. They're not owning the story. Um, so you want to pick somebody, and this happens in the meeting, right, before you, anything bad has happened. Figure out. Who is the person that's going to handle and make sure that they've got a backup, too, in case they're on vacation or they're the one who crashed the CJ, right? <laughs> so appoint someone to be available for interviews, and, um, you know, that person should, once again, be as boring as possible. Hold it now. The, the okay. CJ didn't crash. It yeah. landed with the gear in it up It landed position. with the gear up, right. But everybody's going to say it's a crash, exactly. It's not a crash. That's correct. So we want to be as boring as possible, use neutral language whenever we can. Very good. Um, good job with that. And you want to be as boring as possible. So when you um, talk it, with the media. It landed with the gear up. Yep. Take the call. Give a press conference if you have to. Do an interview. Uh, and tell them exactly the same thing that you included in your story. If you repeat that often enough, that's fine. If they ask you for more details that you don't know. As soon as they become available. Yep, more details will be made available as soon as, as we're able. Um, and just re keep repeating that same thing over and over. Eventually, they will go away. <laughs> yes, they will. Okay. And you can call them when you want to. Right. And if you have good relationships with reporters, you know, like we talked about before, this is going to be a thousand times easier because they know you're going to be straight with them. They know you're a good source of information. They know you're credible. You've got a good track record with them, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the ratio of good news to bad news. <laughs> um, you know, when we're talking about reviews online, and we actually did this in our Marketing Monday, we had a question from someone about what do I do about a bad review. Um, it's the same principle when you have a bad story um, about your company that shows up in the media or that you have to report to the media. Um, if you have a perfect five-star record, that's fabulous. But what happens when something bad happens? So if you've got a five, one five-star review and then you get a one-star review, what happens? The average goes down. The average is like two and a half stars, generously, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
if you have, you know, on the other hand, a whole bunch of five-star reviews, and then you get a one-star review, what happens to your average? About four and a half. Four and a half, exactly. So the same thing happens if you, the first time people hear about your company in the media is when something bad happens. They're going to think you're this kind of company, right, because this is the first time they've heard of you. Mm -hmm. um, if you are regularly, you know, you're putting news out there monthly and it's all good and then something bad happens, this is what's going to happen. You know, you may have a temporary dip where everybody focuses on this, but eventually your reputation that you've spent so long and hard building is going to um, resurrect itself, yep. right? And especially, the longer you have good, the quicker it resurrects. Exactly, especially if you follow that one bad review with, you know, five other good ones. So, you know, same thing with stories. You do five positive stories followed by one negative, followed by five positive. No, I mean, it may be a big deal. I can't say no big deal, but it's a lot less of a big deal than if this is the first time anybody has ever heard of your company. So a lot of people, you know, their philosophy is I want to stay out of the news. They're really putting themselves at risk. You know what I mean? Because the first time anybody hears about them is going to be something that they don't have a choice, right? So you really want to be in the news every time you have a choice and build up this kind of a reputation. And that's really the whole point of PR in a nutshell, is just getting as many stars as you possibly can uh, before something bad happens and, you know, building up those relationships and making sure that, you know, this doesn't get buried because, you know, as I told the, um, I think it was Michael on Monday, you can't get this removed. Getting this removed is a waste of time, energy, and money. Um, you know, anybody who tells you that negative reviews can be removed that are, you know, legitimate negative reviews, they're full of hooey. You know, if people could remove bad reviews, then the review sites would be useless. Yep. So same thing. You know, if something bad happens, don't sweep it under the rug. Just bury it with good news, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Questions about bad news and how to handle it? Um, okay. Should you respond to what a competitor says about you on their own website? Ah, good question. <laughs> if it's on their own website... I wouldn't bother, um, you know, because that is their backyard, their territory, their moderating, you know, and so on. Um, what I would do, though, is take that information and, you know, if you have to make your product or service better to respond to that, do that. You know, I mean, whatever you need to do to, um, you know, I wouldn't respond to it directly, but I would respond directly and publicly, but I would respond to it behind the scenes. Make sure your salespeople are armed and dangerous with good information about how to respond to that individually to people and eventually you know one way to respond to that using search engine optimization is you know let's say it's about a particular component of your product or service that has a very specific term you want to make sure that all of the traffic for that term whenever somebody types that term into Google they go to your website not their website then they won't even see that um, and the question won't come up so once again you don't want to conceal or you know lock horns with anybody, um, just, you know, judo is much, much better tactic than, <laughs> you know, the, what the rams do in the, um, the mountain goats in the uh, Colorado Rockies, you know, <laughs> don't take them on directly, but uh, yeah, do counter it. So, who should handle calls to the media? Does it have to be the owner of the company? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be the owner of the company. Um, it can be a spokesperson, you know, uh, so-and-so spokesperson for this flight school or this airport or this uh, company provided this information. It does have to be somebody. It has to be a live person. It can't just be a press release or a message, recorded message. Um, it has to be a human being, ideally somebody who is cool-headed and well-spoken and, and that kind of thing, and ideally as high up in the company as possible just to improve their credibility. But if the owner's unavailable or doesn't want to do this or is not the best person for this, um, it's perfectly acceptable to be somebody else. Other questions? Uh, not so far. Okay, cool. All right, doing good. All right, so um, press kits. Let's talk about press kits. Um, things that can go in a press kit. Uh, company backgrounder, you know, this would be the facts and um, the story behind the company, the key, um, who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? 
mm -hmm. of the company. Um, the bios of key people. Um, now, when we talk about company back, background, or let me go back to that for just a second, most people put this on the homepage of their website. This is not where this goes. This goes <laughs> in a press kit. Nobody cares about the background of your company unless they're writing a story about you for some other reason. So, um, you know, the company backgrounder is not first page material, uh, but it certainly does go in your press kit. Um, bios of a few key people uh, in your company, especially your customer facing people. Um, like once again, not really first page of your website material, but definitely uh, important here. Fact sheets, you know, maybe a fact sheet for each of your products or services. Uh, how many have you sold? What does it do? Who's it for? You know, that, those kinds of things. Past press coverage, including clippings um, or uh, online, you know, not necessarily clippings, but links to your uh, past press coverage. High resolution photos that they can download. Um, that way they don't have to call you, <laughs> especially if it's in the middle of the night and they're on deadline. Uh, make sure they can get high resolution photos and logos as well uh, because you don't want them using something that is low resolution or makes you look bad. Um, press releases, um, other things that you've done in the past, and so on. Um, key contact information of, and availability. Who should they get hold of and how? So if that's always on your website um, or always in a package that you send to reporters, uh, you know, that's always a very helpful. Or a press kit can look like a web page. You can hide that and have it accessible only by a password. You want to make that really easy to get into. You don't want to be frustrating or anything else, but you may not want to have it front and center on your, your website uh, because your website is built for your customers, not necessarily for the press, right? Um, we don't hide ours. We have it right out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we're a marketing company. Um, it can also be a physical portfolio sent in the mail or handed to a reporter, especially in those briefing rooms in the trade shows. You know, this is a good place to do that. Um, you can include a CD, DVD, USB drive with electronic copies and images, copies of any books or you know, anything else that is relevant to, to what you do. Um, you know, the nicer this is, the better, especially if it's at a um, a trade show where you are doing briefings in the briefing room right next to Honda Jet, you know, <laughs> I mean, um, you want to make sure that uh, that yours are comparable to your competitors at least and to the other people uh, that are going to be talking to the press that day, right? You bet. Okay. Um, our media kit online includes um, aviation news releases. Once again, we try to do um, Good headlines, software addresses dismal flight school failure rate. We talked about that already. Um, has some images so that you know it looks a little bit more interesting. Has dates uh, so we know where this is. Um, this is actually a really cool desk um, by Flight Level Furnishings. This is a standing desk or sitting desk. You know, it has a motorized mechanism in it and it's got the wing structure. It's beautiful. It's uh, really something else. But um, anyway. So recent news releases, and then we also have a section on interesting people. And the reason we do this is because we want to get our clients mentioned on other podcasts and bloggers and things like that. So if you have a blog or a podcast, here are some fascinating folks for interviews on a variety of topics. We'd be happy to make introductions or suggest interview topics or questions that your audience will love. So that's part of the service that we offer. You can do that for your company by offering some of your key people, making them available for interviews. Um, you know, this person is an expert on this type of aviation and he's available for speaking engagements or interviews. Um, you know, that just gives them a lot more visibility and exposure and makes it really easy for people who are bloggers, podcasters, people looking for keynote speakers, other kinds of things to find interesting people. Um, and then we also have a link to Twitter. Why Twitter? Why not Facebook or LinkedIn here? Um, I'm sure you're going to tell us. Okay. Um, people always ask us, why do you use Twitter? Um, it is the most popular uh, media for reporters because it is the most searchable. So since our media kit is built for reporters, we want to make sure that we have some interesting information snacks out there all the time um, about articles that we've written. Uh, it's 140 characters, they've got hashtags, you know, it's easy to find what you're looking for. 
um, and it's changing all the time. So you can see some of these things are 58 minutes ago, um, two hours ago. You know, we've got some, we've got things happening on Twitter all the time. So this shows that we're a really active company with a lot of news going on about us and about our clients, right? Yep. Okay. You couldn't do that with Facebook. It wouldn't be quite as credible or searchable, and you couldn't do that with LinkedIn because the pieces would be longer. Um, and it wouldn't show as many of them at a time, and we don't update LinkedIn all the time like we do Twitter. We don't have an RSS feed and all the fabulous mechanical stuff that makes it easy for us to update, right? Okay, cool. So that's the media kit. Those who tell stories rule the world, right? Yeah, and who said that? I don't know. I've been trying to find the original source for that, but uh, that is absolutely positively true. Um, you know, if you tell the story first and you tell it best, you're the one that's going to be listened to. So um, that's become, you know, it's interesting because we first gave this webinar two years ago and we've updated it since then, but I had this quote in there uh, and I think it's more true now than it was then, don't you think? I don't know about more true, but as true. <laughs> as true, right. That's true. So pitching your story. You want to pitch the right reporter. Uh, pitch at the right time, so ideally using their editorial calendar for something that they're already writing about. Um, send an email, fax, or a letter. Uh, make a phone call. Let them know that it's there. Uh, find out that they got it, and then you want to stop, right? Stop with that reporter, but yeah. then you want to keep your eyes open. Exactly. Um, so, <clears throat> But you stop yeah, contacting that reporter. Watch the publication yourself. Don't ask them to do that for you. <laughs> okay. And then you want to reprint, tweet, post, etc., like crazy once that comes out. Once again, those reporters, what they're working for is eyeballs. You know, they want to have the largest visibility for their stories that they can get. Um, so if you can add your audience to their audience, that's what they're after. Um, you know, they often make their money. Uh, they get paid out of the advertising revenue that their publication brings in. So if your story, you know, of course, they're going to put advertising right next to your story. And if your story is getting a lot of visibility, then it's helping their advertisers and it's helping their publication and it's helping that reporter get paid and feed his children, right? <laughs> That's what we want to do. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that you're adding everything you can, all the fuel to that fire that you possibly can to help that reporter, right? Yep. Okay. Um, checklist. You want to find the right publications, find the right reporters, start building relationships, build your own audience. Once again, if you've got 5,000 Facebook followers that you can send to a story once it's printed, um, a reporter is going to look at that a lot differently than if they've never heard of you before, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, write many great press releases. We recommend at least once a month. Um, once a quarter is probably too little, but it's better than nothing. Um, you know, these guys are really busy. They forget really quickly about you if you're not in contact with them regularly and in the news on a, on a regular basis. You want to be prepared for bad news. Have that doomsday meeting. <laughs> Bring cookies. You know, make it fun. <laughs> you might as well. Um, seriously. Uh, the more prepared you can be, the better. And, you know, if you've thought through all those scenarios, then uh, you'll be better off because you'll look a lot more polished. And last thing is create a press kit. Make it easy on those reporters. All right. So that's um, pretty much it for uh, PR and press releases. I do have a special offer for anyone that wants some help with all that work. Um, and it is all that work, right? Um, finding the right reporters, making those relationships, um, building audiences and all of those things. Um, is hard work and so that's what we do is we help people with that work so if you sell something if you're in the aviation industry and you understand that marketing is not magic <laughs> um, you may be interested in sticking around for this this offer and we will also answer questions at the end of this so if you've got a question we will get to those as well I've seen a couple come in so I apologize we'll we'll get there eventually okay so the insider circle is our group of clients. Um, we A lot of marketing companies don't want their clients to talk to each other because they charge them different rates and um, you know all kinds of crazy things and they would just assume that they not know each other. Um, we take the opposite approach. We're really transparent about our products and services and we want our, our customers to know each other. Aviation is a very small world. 
So we want them to help each other as much as possible. So we've created a group of people that has been helpful to each other beyond our our expectations. Um, you know, they've been unbelievable uh, as far as being supportive and providing information that not any one person could have at any given time. Um, they say it's not about who you know, it's about it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. These are the who you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they gave you proper feedback on your ideas and approaches. Yeah, and they don't pull punches. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. Exactly. Not even for us. <laughs> Not even for us. Um, we also offer office hours in this, so once a month um, you can schedule a time with us or we can have a, a regular time on the schedule when we work on whatever it is that you're working on. So if that's building your press room, if that is brainstorming topics for press releases, if it is finding the right reporters to pitch to, Whatever that is, um, we will help you with the next step in whatever it is that you're trying to do uh, once a month for one hour um, in on a one-on-one -on -one sort of or two-on-one -on -one sort of basis because you usually get John and me. Sometimes John's uh, busy with other things, but most of the time it's it's both of us. So you get two, two brains for the price of one, right? Okay. Um, we offer special projects. Each month we do something special like this month we're working on publicity and press releases. Next month we're working on sales pipelines um, and each month we have a, a theme. So by the end of the year you'll have 12 things that you will have improved in your business. Um, destinations, that's kind of our way of, of uh, doing things for you, for some of our done for you products and services. You may decide, you know what, I want you guys to handle all of my press releases and so that then we give special rates on those kinds of things. We have a book club where we select a sales or marketing or aviation book once a month and that gives us an excuse to talk to each other also um, and interact with each other and share ideas about what works and what doesn't in our industry and in uh, sales and marketing for the aviation industry and you get the briefing room so if you miss one of our webinars or you want to see it six months after the fact you want to say now I had something bad happen and I need to know what the structure is for a, um, a crisis press release <laughs> You can get that um, in our briefing room. So those are available, recordings are available all the time for our members. It is risk-free. Uh, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee uh, with no long-term contracts. If you decide it's not for you, uh, you don't lose anything at all. Um, you get your money back and you carry on. Um, so you also get $347 in free advertising because we invite you to participate in our podcasts. Um, podcast advertising is actually pretty big right now um, and worth quite a bit of money. You also get an ad in our um, aviation services directory and uh, some other goodies to help publicize your company. Um, and if you join today, we're offering one free press release for anyone that joins today, right? Really? Before the end of the day today. John didn't know this, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, That's whatever. The deal. Exactly. So one free press release if you join at the silver level or silver or gold level. Um, you go to abci1.com forward slash insider circle. Scroll to the very bottom. Choose gold or silver level. Enter your credit card information. And once again, your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. So we're risking a little bit here for you. Um, you know, we're going to do that press release for you. And then if you decide you don't like the insider circle, you could, you know, run with it, and that would not make John happy with me for having made this decision, right? <laughs> but it's only good for through the end of the day today, July 12th, uh, 2017. So, um, questions about anything at all? Press well, releases. there's one or two. Okay. Good. How much time does the insider circle take? Oh. Um, it should actually save you time because you're doing what you normally do, you know, you're solving problems that you normally solve and you're marketing your product or service and so on, but you're getting help with that. Um, so, you know, hopefully that will save you time because you're not doing it the stupid way <laughs> or the wrong way or the right way that everybody else has tried. The inefficient way. And has decided that, uh, that it doesn't work that way. Um, we've saved a heck of a lot of time and energy um, because we've run some things by the group and they've given us better ideas. But we do ask that people spend at least one hour a week um, interacting with the group. Uh, that just makes it a thousand times better for everyone else. And also you learn things by helping other people solve problems as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So how does the book club work? How does the book club work? 
every month you get a book in the mail and the whole group gets the same book and it has bookmarks in it. Um, usually six or eight bookmarks of you know different things that we think are interesting, uh, particularly interesting for the aviation industry. And then um, we post on social media about those things and engage in conversation during the month. At the end of the month, we do a podcast uh, discussion. You know, we record the whole discussion with um, members who want to participate. Um, we also discuss it in individual office hours with people who, you know, find ideas that they want to talk about more or things they want to do uh, for themselves that they find in these books. So um, you get the book. We discuss it throughout the month. The next month is a different book. Um, at the end of the year, we vote on the books for the next year. So it's actually pretty cool if you like books, and I do. Uh, some people don't <laughs> what, read. What would be everybody's first clue that you like books? <laughs> Some people, um, you know, are not as crazy about books as I am, and you know, I find that hard to believe, but it does happen. And in that case, they just read the six points that we think are interesting, and it saves them a lot of time. It's kind of like a, an executive summary um, of the book, you know. So then they Paula's don't have to read notes instead of Cliff notes. Well, Paula's and everybody else who's <laughs> who's talking about it. It's not just me. Uh, there's lots of people that like books. Yeah, no, I mean it's Cliff notes version. Right. Maybe Paula's True. notes. True. Okay. So I, I'll be Cliff. Uh -huh. So how much does the silver level cost? The silver level costs two hundred seventy nine dollars a month, um, and uh, that is the best deal that we have ever made for consulting. Uh, you can't get our services for any less than that um, anywhere. There's no product we offer that's less than that. Matter of fact, you can't get it for that even if you just want consulting. That's true. Uh, difference between silver and gold. Okay, silver level is usually for individuals um, or for small companies, individuals, entrepreneurs, you know, those kinds of things, startups, and so on. Um, and that's for one person who's involved with us. You get one book, um, one set of notes, uh, one login, uh, and so on. Um, the gold level is usually for people that have more than one. Uh, so a company wants to have three people, two marketing folks, and a sales guy um, is a pretty typical organization structure for a gold level and then they get three copies of everything and uh, also they get longer office hours uh, depending on the situation because uh, you know we we'll usually structure that for the company so that they get their their money's worth or more than their money's worth out of the deal. So is this a contract or how long do you have to commit? You don't have to commit if it's not for you we'd rather not have you in it anyway. <laughs> Um, so basically, if it's not a good fit, um, and you decide or we decide uh, that it's not a good fit, we refund your um, your initial payment, your $279, and uh, part as friends, hopefully. There are some people that would do better with individual consulting, and if that's the case, that's fine. It's going to cost you more, <laughs> um, of course, because it takes more of our time. Um, so, you know, that's perfectly fine, and, and for some people, we've, we've told them that, you know, that this isn't going to serve you. Um, so let's do individual consulting instead. So let's go back to a question we had before, which is, can yes. I listen to this later? Yes, you absolutely can. We will. Uh, uh, this is a free webinar, so we'll create a um, create a uh, recording of this and put it on our website. And there were two questions at the beginning that we wanted to come back to. There were. Yeah, we said we'd come back to them. That was one. No, there were two questions at the beginning about uh, our press release is a waste of time. And no. Yeah, there were two. One was our our press release is a waste of time, and second was um, I don't remember what the second one was. Hopefully, we can find that. Well, but talk to that. The one. Um, our press release is a waste of time. Hopefully, we answer that question in enough detail. But basically, it's um, the things that are really worth it are the releases that you write for a specific reporter rather than trying to broadcast in shotgun. So you want to think like a, um, a sniper rifle instead of a shotgun. And uh, But if you have gone to the trouble of writing a press release and you target it to, for a specific publication and reporter, then by all means shotgun the thing. Um, spend the $100, uh, put it on one of the press release services, and we do this with the press releases that we write for people because the money really goes into crafting that well and spending the time doing the interviews, getting the pictures, writing a good story. And then once you've done that, 100 bucks is, is nothing. Um, so we actually include that in our content uh, program. Basically, people pay $879 a month 
we write one story for them uh, and do the visuals, the headlines, you know, the crafting toward a particular reporter, the targeting and everything else. And then um, we'll put it on one of the services to get them the maximum visibility for that, right? Yep. This okay. is uh, the second question. Are these services any of them particularly good or bad? Okay. And uh, I would say the very best one is us. <laughs> <laughs> um, seriously, you know, I think, um, you know, we have a lot of experience in, in aviation. We know a lot of reporters. Um, so, you know, our content service um, for $879 a month or um, we do have upgrades from that uh, if you're in a very specific field or something that requires a lot of writing um, that's very specific in charts and graphs. and and other kinds of things that take a lot more time. Um, well, but your knowledge and relationship with all these various and reporters and, yeah. and uh, PR firms that we use is all worthy. Exactly. So, you know, we are a lot more expensive than the $100 uh, shotgun, your press release services, but every one that we produce um, gets a lot more visibility than anything I've seen, you know, put out just shotgun to a press release. Not only that, person. but after when one of our press releases goes out, we get a link back mm -hmm. for everywhere it went that it goes to you, so you know yeah. where it went, what it looks like, what it says, you can click on it and go read it. Exactly. And you can forward that to anybody, you can put it on your website, you can do whatever you want with it. Exactly, and then you can work on your race car graphic, right? Yeah, with course. all the logos of the um, the publications that have featured your materials and things like that. So, yeah, um, I know this is um, not an unbiased statement, but I think it is a true statement, you know, that that really is the best best deal that we have, and that's actually our best-selling product is our content subscription. So yep. we're way over time, uh, but we promised to stay here until we answered all the questions. Are we done? As far as I can tell. Okay, cool. Um, if there's anything else that you'd like to, to talk about, you can always schedule a 30-minute free consultation with us, and we'll talk about your specific situation, especially the insurance guy and the flight school. Um, we'd love to talk to you about um, some great press release ideas that will take longer than we have today. So you bet. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. All see right. You. Thank Ciao. you. You're cool.